from around the globe. It's theCUBE, covering HPE Discover Virtual Experience. Brought to you by HPE. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE's coverage of HPE Discover, the virtual experience for 2020. Uh, getting to talk to HP uh, executives, uh, their, their partners, uh, the ecosystem, uh, where they are around the globe. This session we're going to be digging in about artificial intelligence, obviously a super important topic uh, these days. And to help me do that, I've got two guests from NVIDIA uh, sitting in the window next to me. We have Presh Karya, he's the Director of Product Marketing, and sitting next to him uh, in the virtual environment is uh, Kevin Deerling, who is the Senior Vice President of marketing, as I mentioned, both with NVIDIA. Uh, thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you, Stu, great to be here. Great to be here. All right, so Prish, why don't you set the stage for us? You know, AI, obviously, you know, one of those mega trends we talk about, um, but just give us the stage as to, you know, where NVIDIA sits, where the market sits, and your, your customers today is that they think about AI. Yeah, yeah, so uh, we are basically witnessing a massive changes uh, that are happening across every industry. And it's basically the confluence of three things. Uh, one is of course AI, uh, the second is 5G and IoT, uh, and the third is the ability to process all of the data that we have uh, that's now possible. Uh, for AI, uh, we are now seeing really advanced models uh, from computer vision uh, to understanding natural language uh, to the ability to speak uh, in, uh, in, in conversational uh, terms. Uh, in terms of uh, IoT and 5G, uh, there, are, uh, there are billions of devices uh, that are sensing uh, and inferring information. And now we have the ability to act, make decisions uh, in various industries. Uh, and finally, uh, all of the processing capabilities that we have today uh, at the data center and in the cloud as well as at the edge, uh, with the GPUs, uh, as well as advanced networking uh, that's available. Uh, we can now make sense of all of this data to help uh, industrial transformation. Yeah, uh, Ke Kevin, you know, it, it's interesting. We look at some of these waves of technology and we say, okay, there's a lot of new pieces here. You talk about 5G, it's the next generation, but architecturally, some of these things remind us of the past. So when, when I look at some of these architectures, I think about you know, what we've done for high performance computing for a long time. Uh, obviously, you know, Mellanox, uh, where, where you came from uh, through NVIDIA's acquisition, you know, strong play in that environment. So maybe give us a little bit, compare, contrast, you know, what's the same and what's different about you know, this highly distributed you know, edge compute AI, IoT environment, and, and what's the same with what we were doing with HPC in the past? Yeah, so we've, you know, Mellanox has now been a part of NVIDIA for a little over a month, and uh, it's great to be part of that. We were both focused on accelerated computing and high performance computing. And to do that, what it means is the scale and the type of problems that we're trying to solve are just simply too large to fit into a single computer. So if that's the case, then you connect a lot of computers. And Jensen talked about this recently at the GTC keynote, where he said that the new unit of computing is really the data center. So it's no longer the box that sits on your desk or even in a rack, it's the entire data center, because that's the scale of the types of problems that we're solving. And so the notion of scale up and scale out, the network becomes really, really critical. And we're doing high performance networking for a long time. When you move to the edge, instead of having you know, a single data center with 10,000 computers, you have 10,000 data centers, each of which has a small number of servers that is processing all of that information that's coming in. But in a sense, the problems are very, very similar, whether you're at the edge or you're doing massive HPC, scientific computing or cloud computing. And so we're excited to be part of bringing together the AI and the networking because they so we're really optimizing at the data center scale across the entire stack. All right, so it, it's interesting. You, you, you mentioned uh, you know, NVIDIA CEO Jensen. Uh, I believe if I saw right in there, he actually said, threw out a term which I, I'd not run across. It was the data processing unit or DPU in that you know, data center uh, as you talked about. Um, 
help us wrap our heads around this a little bit. You know, I know my CPUs, you know, when I think about GPUs, I, I obviously think of NVIDIA, um, you know, TPUs in the cloud and everything we're doing. So, um, you know, what is DPUs? Is this just, you know, some, some new AI thing or, you know, is, is, is this kind of a new architectural model? Yeah, I think what Jensen highlighted is that there's three key elements of this accelerated, disaggregated infrastructure that the data center is becoming. And so that's the CPU, which is doing traditional single threaded workload. But for all of the accelerated workload, you need the GPU. And that does massive parallelism, deals with massive amounts of data. But to get that data into the GPU and also into the CPU, you need really an intelligent data processing unit because the scale and scope of GPUs and CPUs today, these are not single core entities. These are hundreds or even thousands of cores in a big system. Uh, and you need to steer the traffic exactly to the right place. You need to do it securely. You need to do it virtualized. You need to do it with containers. And to do all of that, you need a programmable data processing unit. So we have something called our Bluefield, which combines our latest, greatest 100 gig and 200 gig network connectivity with ARM processors and a whole bunch of accelerators for security, for virtualization, for storage. And all of those things then feed these giant parallel engines, which are the GPU. And of course, the CPU, which is really the workload at the application layer for non-accelerated apps. Great, so Paresh, you know, Kevin talked about, you know, needing similar uh, types of services wherever uh, you, you, the data is. I was wondering if you could really help expand for us a little bit the implications of AI at the edge. Sure, yeah. Uh, so AI is uh, basically not just one workload. Uh, AI is many different types of models, uh, and AI also means training uh, as well as inferencing, which are very different workloads. Uh, for AI training, for example, uh, we are seeing uh, the models uh, growing exponentially. Uh, think of uh, think of uh, an AI model uh, like a brain uh, of uh, of a computer, or like a brain uh, solving a particular use case. Uh, for simple models like computer vision. Uh, we have uh, models uh, that are smaller. Uh, bugs have computer vision. But advanced models like natural language processing, uh, they require larger brains or larger models. Uh, so on one hand, we are seeing the size of the AI models uh, increasing tremendously. Uh, and in order to train these models, uh, you need to uh, look at uh, computing at the scale of data center, many processors, many different servers working together uh, to train a single model. Uh, on the other hand, uh, because of these AI models, they are so accurate today, uh, from understanding languages to speaking languages uh, to providing the right recommendations, uh, whether it's for products or for content uh, that you may want to consume uh, or advertisements and so on. Uh, these models are so effective and efficient uh, that uh, they are being powered by AI today. These applications are being powered by AI. And uh, each application requires a small amount of acceleration. Uh, so you need the ability to scale out uh, for and support many different applications. Uh, so uh, with our newly launched uh, Ampere architecture, uh, just a couple of weeks ago that Jensen announced uh, in the virtual keynote, uh, for the first time we are now able uh, to provide both uh, scale up and scale out uh, both training, data analytics, as well as inference on the single architecture. And, and that's very exciting. Great. Yeah, so um, if you look at that, the other thing that's interesting is you're talking about at the edge and scale out versus scale up. The networking is critical for both of those, and there's a lot of different workloads. And as Paresh was describing, you've got different workloads that require different amounts of GPU or storage or networking. And so part of that vision of this data center as the computer is that the DPU lets you scale independently everything. So you can compose, you disaggregate into GPUs and storage and CPUs, 
and then you compose exactly the computer that you need on the fly, containerized, to solve the problem that you're solving right now. So these new way of programming is programming the entire data center at once, and you'll go grab all of it, and it'll run for a few hundred milliseconds even, and then it'll come back down and recompose itself constantly. And to do that, you need this very highly efficient networking infrastructure. And the good news is we're here at HPE Discover. We've got a great partner with HPE. You know, they have our M-series switches that uses the Mellanox 100 gig and now even 200 and 400 gig Ethernet switches. They have all of our adapters and they have great platforms. The Apollo platform, for example, is great for HPC. And they have other great platforms that we're looking at with the new telco that we're doing for 5G and accelerating that. Yeah, and on the edge computing side, uh, there's the edge line set of products, uh, which are very interesting. Uh, the other sort of aspect uh, uh, that I, I wanted to touch upon uh, is is the whole uh, software stack that's needed for the edge. Uh, so edge is different in the sense that it's not centrally managed. Uh, the edge computing devices uh, are distributed, uh, remote locations, and so managing uh, the workflow uh, of running and updating software on it uh, is is uh, important uh, and it needs to be done in a very secure manner. Uh, the the second thing uh, that's that's very different again uh, for the edges these devices are going to require connectivity. Uh, uh, as Kevin was pointing out, the importance of networking. Uh, so we also announced uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, at our GTC uh, our EGX uh, product that combines uh, the Mellanox NIC. Uh, and our GPUs uh, into a single uh, processor. Uh, Mellanox NIC provides a fast connectivity, a security, uh, as well as uh, encryption and decryption capabilities. Uh, GPUs provide acceleration uh, to run uh, the advanced AI models uh, that are required uh, for applications at the edge. Okay, and if I understood that right, so the, you know, you, you've got these throughout the the HPE product line. You know, HPE's got long history of making you know flexible configurations. I remember when they first came out with the blade server, it was you know different form factors, different connectivity options. Uh, you know they they pushed heavily into composable infrastructure. So it sounds like this is just a kind of extending uh, you know what 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 HP has been doing for a couple of decades. Yeah, I think HP is a great partner there. And uh, these new platforms, the EGX, for example, that was just announced, a great workload there is the 5G Telco. So we'll be working with our friends at HPE to take that to market as well. And you know, really there's a lot of different workloads and they've got a great portfolio of products uh, across you know, the, the spectrum from regular servers and 1U, 2U, and then all the way up to their big Apollo platform. Well, I'm, I'm glad you brought up uh, you know, Telco. I, I'm curious, are there any specific you know, applications or workloads that you know, are the, the low hanging fruit or the kind of the first targets that you'd use for for AI acceleration. Yeah, so you know the 5G workload is just awesome. We introduced with the EGX a new platform called Arial, which is a programming framework. Uh, and there were lots of partners there that were part of that, including you know folks like Ericsson. And the idea there is that you have a software-defined hardware-accelerated radio area network, so a cloud RAN. And it really has all of the right attributes of the cloud. And what's nice there is now you can change on the fly the uh, algorithms that you're using for the baseband codecs without having to go climb a radio tower and change the actual physical infrastructure. So that's a critical part. Our role in that on the networking side, we introduced a technology that's part of EGX. It's in our ConnectX DX adapter. It's called 5T for 5G. And one of the things that happens is you need this time-triggered transport for uh, telco technology. That's the 5Ts for 5G. And the reason is because you're doing distributed baseband unit, distributed radio processing. And the timing between each of those server nodes needs to be super precise, 20 nanoseconds. It's something that simply can't be done in software. And so we did that in hardware. So instead of having an expensive FPGA to try to synchronize all of these boxes together, we put it into our NIC 
And now we can put that into industry standard servers. HP has some fantastic servers. And then with the EGX platform, uh, with that, we can build really scale out software defined cloud RAN. Awesome. Um, uh, yeah, it, Presh, anything else on, on the application side uh, you'd like to add in addition to what Kevin was talking about? Uh, yeah, from, so from application perspective, uh, you know, every industry uh, has applications uh, that, that touch on edge. Uh, if you take a look at uh, retail, for example, uh, there is, you know, all the way from supply chain uh, to inventory management to keeping the right uh, stock uh, units uh, in the in the shelves, uh, making sure there is uh, uh, there is no um, slippage or shrinkage. Uh, so uh, to telecom, to healthcare, uh, where you're looking at constantly monitoring uh, uh, patients uh, and uh, and taking actions uh, for the best outcomes uh, to manufacturing, uh, where you're looking to automate uh, uh, production, detecting failures much early on. Uh, in the production cycle, uh, and so on. Every industry uh, has uh, different applications, uh, but they all use AI. Uh, they can all uh, leverage uh, the computing capabilities uh, and uh, high-speed networking at the edge uh, to transform their business processes. All right, well, it, it, it's interesting. It, it, almost every time we've talked about AI, networking has come up. So, you know, Kevin, I think that probably tees up a little bit why you know, NVIDIA, you know, spent around $7 billion for, you know, the acquisition of Mellanox, and not only was there the Mellanox acquisition, uh, Cumulus Network, uh, you know, very known in the network space for, you know, software-defined really, you know, operating system for networking, but give us, you know, strategically, does this change the direction of NVIDIA? How should we be thinking about NVIDIA in, in the overall network? Yeah, I think the, the way to think about it is going back to that data center as the computer. And if you're thinking about the data center as the computer, then the networking becomes the backplane, if you will, of that data center computer. And having a high performance network is really critical. And Mellanox has been a leader in that for 20 years now with our InfiniBand and our Ethernet product. Um, but beyond that, you need a programmatic interface because one of the things that's really important in the cloud is that everything is software defined and it's containerized now. And there's no better company in the world than Cumulus, uh, really the pioneer in building Cumulus Linux, taking the Linux operating system and running that on multiple hardware. So not just hardware from Mellanox, but hardware from other people as well. And so that whole notion of an open networking platform, we're committed to uh, continue to support that. And now you have a programmatic interface that you can drop containers on top of. You know, Cumulus has been the, the leader in the Linux uh, FRR, it's free range routing, which is the core routing algorithm. And that really is at the, the heart of other open source network operating systems like Sonic and uh, and so we see a lot of synergy here, all the analytics that Cumulus is bringing to bear with NetQ. So it's really great that they're going to be part here of the NVIDIA team. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you both much. Uh, I want to give you the, the final word, you know, what, what should HPE customers and their ecosystem know about the NVIDIA and HPE partnership? Yeah, so I'll start. Um, you know, I think HPE has been a longtime partner and a customer of ours. If you have accelerated workloads, you need to connect those together. The HPE server portfolio is an ideal place that we can combine some of the work we're doing with our new Amperes uh, and the existing GPUs. And then also to connect those together with the M series, which is their Ethernet switches that are based on our spectrum switch platforms, and then all of the HPC related activities on InfiniBand, they're a great partner there. Uh, and so all of that pulling it together, you know, and now as at the edge, as edge becomes more and more important, security becomes more and more important. And you have to go to this zero trust model. If you plug in a camera that somebody has at the edge, even if it's in a car, you can't trust it. So everything has to become you know, validated, authenticated, uh, all the data needs to be encrypted. 
And so they're going to be a great partner because they've been a leader in building the most secure platforms in the, the world. Yeah, and uh, and on the data center server portfolio side, uh, you know, we uh, we really work very closely with HP uh, on various different lines of products and really fantastic servers uh, from the Apollo line uh, of scale up servers uh, to Synergy and Proliant line, uh, as well as Edge line uh, for the Edge, uh, and on the supercomputing side uh, with uh, with the Prey uh, side of things. Uh, so we really work uh, through the full spectrum. Uh, of solutions uh, with HP. Uh, we also uh, work on the software side uh, where uh, a lot of these uh, servers uh, are also certified uh, to run our full stack uh, under a program uh, that we call NGC Ready. Uh, so customers get phenomenal value uh, right uh, off the bat. They're guaranteed uh, to have uh, accelerated workloads work well uh, when they choose these servers. Awesome. Well, thank you both for giving us the updates. A uh, lot happening, obviously, in the AI space. Appreciate all the updates. Thanks, Stu. Great to talk to you. Stay well. Thanks, Stu. Take care. All right. Stay with us for lots more from HPE Discover Virtual Experience 2020. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.